Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to an all-new Elder Scrolls Legends deck video. The new expansion, Heroes of Skyrim, soft launched yesterday, so it is already out. If you're not familiar with that, just check it out. There are The booster packs are available. You can open the booster packs right now, also it should have just come out today, but it was soft launched yesterday. So for the start of the new expansion, I wanted to show you a deck with a card that was uh, subject to a lot of discussions, especially on Reddit, and that is the Echo of Akatosh card, a new dragon costing 6 magicka, 5-5 five, five units summon, give each creature in your deck a random keyword. So that's a very, very strong effect. We are running the card three times. With that, you will give every creature in your deck a random keyword. So you have a chance to give every creature charge, drain, stuff like that. Very good stuff indeed. And if you play the Echo of Akatosh multiple times, because it is not a unique card, the amount of keywords you're getting is just increasing increasing so you have a very good chance if you play the echo of akatosh two or three times you have a very good chance to get charge and drain on a creature and that is just so valuable that is giving you in slower matchups a huge huge edge against fast decks the echo of akatosh is unfortunately not doing that much because if you are dying on turn seven or eight it's not really that valuable to get one creature out of your deck with a random keyword so keep in mind that the keywords are only getting for all the key creatures in your deck, not in your hand, not on the board, only the creatures in your deck. So to get any value out of the Echo of Akatosh, you need to have a game that is lasting longer. We are running a mid-range assassin here. So for the start of this new season, new expansion, we're running a mid-range assassin deck that was working great for me yesterday with only a few cards of the new expansion. So I'm still fine tuning here and there. There is still a lot that will change over the next couple of weeks, but so far I'm pretty happy with the deck. So the Echo of Akatosh helps you a lot against other mid-range decks or also obviously against control decks, but against aggressive decks, he is not that great. It's not helping you too much for six. You're getting just a five, five with an effect that is probably not helping you. Maybe getting one unit with a keyword and that's it. Alongside the Echo of Akatosh, we're also running the new legendary card Ancano, which is a unique legendary for eight and has a five, five on breakthrough summon deal five damage and your actions have breakthrough. So because we're running kind of aggressive here on this deck, uh, the five damage can be used just for the phase and then you can finish the game hopefully on turn nine with the Supreme Artomancer or also with the Tesca tier. So this Tesca is also on the deck, of course. And the Ancano cannot only be played once, but we are also running a Knight to Remember. So he can play it multiple times if we like that. So a Knight to Remember, very strong card, uh, the card that I have revealed few days ago so a friendly creature disappears to who knows where and then returns to the other lane shackled which means you will resummon the creature so get the resummon effect so you can summon it again and you're also getting the summon effects that means if we use that on the Ancano, for example you will get the option to get another five damage for example in the face or kill a unit whatever you like you can play that on supreme Artomancer, get then another supreme Artomancer in the other lane and also dealing the damage spawning the flame artonex again and again just keep in mind that every buff on the unit every debuff every damage everything is going away as well so it would be the same as if you would play the card from your hand everything is going away from the unit so also silence or so everything is going away pretty interesting combination and it helps you to close the game most often then at least on turn 10 if you still have a supreme artomancer on the board if you have encarno on the board that is normally enough to clear the game so far the deck is performing pretty good but also there are a lot of people that are trying out some decks so the core is just the good old mid-range deck from the last expansion with a few new cards in it probably need to fine-tune that a bit more so far it's running good the only problem i had with the deck so far were aggressive decks because they are potentially from time to time too fast for our deck uh, if they are if you're not facing aggressive decks so mid-range or control deck the echo of akatosh is giving you so much value and the rest of the cards are also very aggressive so normally you can then close the game before your opponent has a chance to finish you so that's the deck and we will now play the deck a bit on the ladder hope i have some success in the video and i hope you like the deck if you like it don't forget to hit the like button of the video as well and subscribe to the channel so here we go now playing some games with the deck midrange assassin it is all right so first game will be against the scout and right now you're seeing many many scouts on the ladder and the deck type is really good to be honest so ram scout or whatever he's playing it's pretty useful. There are a lot of different builds at the moment that I've seen since yesterday. Starting with Firebolt, Wardcraft, the Dagger Formate, also have a Supreme Artomancer. 
would have loved to keep the echo in this situation but the rest of the cards were too expensive so we needed to replace those get a knight to remember yeah might be coming to handy later let's start here with the ward grafter so we're then playing the daggerfall mate and because we have a knight to remember we can for example use that on the ward crafter and then give the daggerfall mate in the ward if we <laughs> resummon the ward crafter going for the milk water witch so this one is out of the question lightning bolt I mean, the Knight Remember is really excellent as Supreme Automancer. Super greedy. His growth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unexpected. There's a Ramp Scout. Really unexpected. We got another Dagger for Mage. So why not just kill the Merkwater Witch? Witch? We're dropping another Dagger for Mage. Getting then another Tome of Alteration. And hopefully a lot of cards to draw. You must be cleansed. Elephant Priest, that's the silence on the Daggerfall Mage. So we can still use Knight Remember, obviously, but I don't think we have to. So how about we will just use the Lightning Bolt, get rid of the Shadow from Priest, push a bit of damage in the face. So what you are normally trying to do is push enough damage in your opponent's face that you can kill him then onto a 9, 10 or 11 with stuff like Supreme Artomancer into Supreme Artomancer and so on and so on. So it's kind of crucial that you are not falling behind. There is a Preserver of the Rune right now. He is still at 6, so Preserver is only a small unit, not a problem. Especially if you consider that we have a Tome of Alteration here. And we have a Fireball, so what we are doing is we use the Tome of Alteration. Drawing an extra card, which is a Leaf Lurker, wow. Would have loved to see that a bit earlier. And let's use the Fireball here. We are killing the Preserver. And pushing 4 into his face, no help for him. We could now use the Shadow Shift and get an additional card that would more or less save our dagger for mage. But I don't think we have to, so let's just ask. Nah, Glyph. Oh yeah, so now we could use Shadow Shift. Cliff Racer. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So we are Shadow Shifting, getting additional cards. We are also playing Cliff Racer for 8 in the face. As another Leaf Lurker. Oh, not bad. So that is 4 in the face. That's the Cliff Racer, that's another 4 in the face. He's down to 14. And we can do that, we can be that aggressive because we have the Supreme Automans already in our hand. We have the Knight to remember. So he needs to kill those units. More stuff is coming. Wiper. And oh, double wiper, yeah. Why not? Cliff Razor is by far the best card to get here. Otherwise, we might have played just a Leaf Lurker or so. Just to have something on the board. So Cliff Razor obviously coming. Pushing another 4 into his face. Brotherhood Slayer is coming. So next turn. Obviously Supreme Automancer. He's not pushing any sort of damage in our face. So that means we're staying at 29. While he is at least going down to 6. And if he's not able to kill everything here. He's even going down lower. And then he still needs to combat the Supreme Automancer. Otherwise we're just playing Knight to Remember on Supreme Automancer. And getting the damage in again. The There's a Preserver. And the Little Girl. Uh, so Little Girl is interesting. And that's another Supreme Artemisia. Wow. Little Girl is interesting because that allows him to drain. Uh, but because we're getting a complete contract here, we can play Supreme Artemisia now. We can play another Supreme Artemisia on the next turn and play a Knight to Remember. So that is pretty fun to do. It's nothing personal. So, first one's coming. That's another four into his face. He's down to six now. The Little Girl here will provide him with drain, so he will go back to 11. He's obviously killing the flame on the left side. If he's going for the face, which he's probably just doing, then he is also um, giving us another card. Now you will see real power. The greedy blood magic lord. People or the so extra trusted. blood spell. And he can use that. He still has three extra magicka. Wow, drain life. Well, that is good. By that is good indeed. Uh, let's just see. So he's at 16. We have eight. We have eight. We have a cliff race. I will be another four. So that is then enough if we use a knight to remember. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we could just play Supreme Artomancer. Doesn't really matter, right? Supreme Artomancer and then a knight to remember is also a lot of damage. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just play this one. I mean, it's already enough if we play the Supreme Artomancer here. So let's just try that and win the game with that. So that's 8 now in the face, and if we would have played a Knight Remember, it would be another 8 in the face. And that's just how strong this one is, because we could have played that. So that would be 16 in one turn, which is insane. 
Game two is against the uh, Sorcerer, which can be very annoying at the moment with the new uh, multicolor card that allows Lock you to silence and then deal two damage, which is especially strong against cards like a Daggerfall Mage. So I'm not even sure if we want to keep the Daggerfall Mage in the deck. Have to try that out more. Uh, so far, I'm not getting too much value out of that. Most of the time, he's just getting silenced or he's getting killed anyway without giving us the effect. We have a Harpy here for the start, have a Brotherhood Slayer, and we have the Echo of Akatosh. So that's only costing 5. Or well, we can play that on turn 5 because we have the extra ring here. So we're definitely doing that. Looking forward to get the extra value. Steve's Guilty Coot. Yeah, okay, let's start with that. What getting an additional here? card here. Never bad. Goblin Skulk. So we are playing Goblin Skulk on the next turn. Brotherhood Slayer then on turn uh, 3 and on turn 4. Harpy, potentially. Will we keep spell thought. Yeah, so there's a Kano. My Don't care too much for the wind keeps spell pot right now. Let's just drop the Goblin Skull. Cunning ally. Let's he is getting a fireball. Good Cut for him. Down. Bad for us. And we have a shadow shift. So yeah, let's just get a curse card here. And I would say we're using the Brotherhood Slayer. Because we now have a shadow shift as well. Just so we can then. If he's using the fireball, he's probably using that on the Goblin Skulk if he's not trading. And then we can use the uh, Shadow Shift and kill the Windkeep Spell Thought to get a complete contract. I have There's a trade, as expected. Yeah. And a Harpy, okay. Harpy's good for him. So no Shadow Shift. Uh, which also means... I mean, we can still a Shadow Shift, of course. Also means we have not much to do right now, so potentially, I mean... Shadow shifting might not be too bad because we are going for the echo anyway next turn. So maybe we want the extra card to draw. Let's see. Let's use the shadow shift here. Getting goblin skulls. Oh yeah, okay. So we're using the curse card. We're using the RP here. Let's just check on the windkeep spell thought and we are using the extra magicka for a goblin skull. So then we want to trade here harpy into harpy. We want to kill the Windkeep Spellthought to get a completed contract and we want to hit him in the face with the Goblin Skulk to get a Curse card. Plus we are using the Echo of Akatosh on the next turn to get the extra value out of our deck. Fireballing, Goblin Skulk going down. And a Mummify. Interesting. Plus a Fireball, wow. Someone is really afraid of the small creatures here. Could have probably waited with a Mummify for later. Ah well, we don't care too much, right? So let's... Kill the Harpy. We are going for the Egg of Akatosh. Drop it here on the left so we can kill the Windkeep Spell Thought. We're now getting a random keyword on every creature in our deck. So let's just hope that we are drawing a lot of creatures. I am a child Night of Shadow. Ah, okay, Night Shadow is a bit of a problem. Right now we cannot kill that, but we are getting a Wardcrafter with lethal. So that is nice. And do we want to give him another card? I mean, he's draining next turn. Uh, no, let's not give him another card. I want that the Wardcliffe has a chance to survive here. So he's hitting us in the face. That's fine. Not going to attack him right now. The only card we can play on the next turn is a Firebolt anyway. You must we need to be, be careful. Cleansed. A Shadow and Priest. Yeah, that's good. So we're getting Harpy. Also good. With Charge. <laughs> not really helping us too much. Let's just can still play something, though I would still say we are shaggling the Shadow and Priest. We want to kill the Night Shadow, obviously. If he's killing the Harpy now, then bad luck. Thank you, Spell Thought, so no mine. kill. That means we can kill the Night Shadow here without a problem. Getting a Shaman as well, so let's kill this one. Firebolt. Get it enough for five in the face. We will play the Shaman on the right, so we have a chance to kill the Shadow and Priest if we're not going into the Arcano. If we're going into a Kano, we might play Curse Card on the Windkeep. Oh, he's just going for an Ice Storm. Look at him. Dagger for Mage with Charge. Oh yeah, I like that. So instead of a Kano, we're going to the Dagger for Mage, killing his Shadow from Priest. We're then using the item on the Dagger for Mage to have a stronger unit than the Windkeep. Plus, we're drawing an extra card. And that's a Lightning Bolt. Okay. We would have gotten the Lightning Bolt here out of the rune, so maybe it wasn't that great to get this one, but well, you cannot know that before, right? The Elusive. No nice problem. An additional card for him. In. Royal Sage on the other hand might be a problem. Drain, Ward, and Charge. Yeah. Okay, that's a trade. 
Are you giving us another card? Not doing that. But Daggerfall with the breakthrough, I would say we are now dropping the Supreme Automata. He's then getting one card. But our board is kinda good. He's then using the Elusive here to kill the Flame. And the Windkeep is getting down. Unfortunately, there's something incoming. So a Lightning Bolt would be bad. Here's a Lightning Bolt. Nicely done. Good pickup for him. Left side going down. Plus he's draining. I am a child. Another Night Shadow. Uh, so that's that's a target for the Encarno. And another Royal Sage. You have to be I kidding me. Yeah, of course it's getting ward. Lethal and guard. Great, great success for him. That has to be nice. And Supreme with some drain. I like that a lot. But for now the Night Shadow here is way too dangerous. So we're definitely dropping the Encarno. Uh, I'm gonna drop that here, right? So we can kill his elusive. I have many so Night Shadow going down. The Royal Sage is also going down. Getting a bit of damage here, so that is one, it's down to 26. With Supreme you can drain, so that is then four. Killing the elusive. Running ally, maybe he's killing our Arcano. If he's getting lucky again, of course. But that has to be nice. Getting the right stuff all the time when you need it. Fireballing. So and he's again not pushing any sort of damage. Brother Slay with lethal. Uh, obviously, we are going for the Supreme Artemensa. And ending the turn. Azura, give me strength. So that is two to drain, another two to drain. We are back to 25, which also means that he's just pushing some damage now in. Now he can, now he's not giving us another card. Dagger for Mage. No chance right now to get rid of the Dagger for Mage without giving him the effect. Harpy's probably shaggling. Oh, he's shaggling this guy, okay. Curse card. Curse card is good. So how about lightning boltening the cunning ally? Getting the curse card here on the daggerful mage. And we're obviously draining through the Supreme Artomancer because we are dropping the daggerful the mage here. And we're also dropping the brother slayer. So he's down to 21, we are back to 26. We will now push another 5 into his face. Uh, not getting something this time. He's down to 30 now. We are back to 29. We have a strong board here. And let's see. Dagger for Mage alone is not good enough for any of the kills. Hitting our Dagger for Mage. So we are also getting a Tome of Alteration. Probably looking forward to play that here and on the on the Wind Keep. To kill then the Supreme. Oh wow, he's just playing an Ice Storm again. Has to be nice. And now he can finally hit us in the face. Good for him. Get another dagger for mate. So how about let's just drop that here. And we're dropping that the on the left side. Tomb of Alteration is coming directly to get another card. Getting a Brotherhood Slayer with charge. So just that is good. We can name. take down the Windkeep Spell Thought. Plus getting a complete contract. Not sure if we really can do something with that. But for now, better to have a completed contract than not have one. A worst card would be now the new um, multicolor card. Sorcerer's Negotiation or something like that. With that, he can silence the dagger for mage. Form of alteration. If that is coming, that would be by far the sickest card. It is a lightning bolt, so we're getting another Tome of alteration. He's obviously then killing our dagger for mage, even got pollution. Wow. So the dagger for mage is up to 8 4. Get a. Oh, we get a Murkwater Shaman. So we're using the Tome of Alteration here, drawing an extra card, maybe we get something there. Lightning Bolt, yeah, that is good. That is really good, so we'll it's hit him for 5. Personal. Dropping the Lightning Bolt on the Dagger for Mage. I mean, we, you could save that here and hope that you can kill him on the next turn. Problem then is uh, that the Dagger for Mage is dealing a lot of damage, so I would say just killing this one. Dropping the Murkwater Shaman. He's probably using the Lucian here to take care of the Brotherhood Slayer. If he has nothing else in his hand right now to kill the Brotherhood Slayer, because he needs to be afraid. He's at 8 life, and we have 8 damage on the board. Well, he just got another Ice Storm. Seriously. The last Ice Storm. And someone is really getting lucky. Shadow Shift without a creature on the board. Great success. So, nothing to play. We have a complete contract. We have a Shadow Shift here. And if you're losing this game, I would be so unhappy. Yeah, 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 of course. Someone really likes to get his shit from the top. So we're down to 22. 
Night to remember. Wow. Yeah, no comment here. Really, no comment. And now he already has 14, 15, 18 damage on the board. So if he's playing two units, that's it. Man, that really has to be nice. That's insane. So our only chance will then be to get either some prophecies here. Or we need some charge units from the top. But seriously, he's just playing the two units. We're not getting anything. Because we already played most of the lightning bolts. We have played... Let's see, we have played two lightning bolts. We have played two harpies. Oh, there is a lightning bolt. Wow. And now we can kill the Supreme Artemis because he was not taken with that one first. I believe Lurkan, by the way, has a drain. Not helping us. And we are probably still losing. Which is insane. This crown. Yeah, hiking Emmerich. Great success. Another two in the face. To loot this game is really insane. Yeah, and another World Sage. The third wisdom. one. Drain, regenerate, drain, breakthrough, ward, regenerate. Wardcrafter with regenerate. Oh, that is so insane. Oh, wow. So the only thing we could do is hope to get... What could we get here? That's dealing 8. Nothing. Really nothing. So if we play Leaf Lurker, we can, for example, take down the Lucian, or we can play um, Firebolt here and then play the Leaf Lurker. Uh, let's, still, let's just, the just play the Leaf Lurker. Yeah, let's play a Knight Shadow Shift. Yeah. See what we can find. Normally nothing in the deck can help us now. Mortal Trader with Regenerate. Yeah, we're not even getting the good stuff that we need. Regenerate on the Wardcraft is shitty. Don't need that on the Mortal Trader. Great success. So that has to be nice. He got all the ice storms, he got all the royal sages, and all the other shit that he he played when he needed. The cunning ally was giving him the firebolt all the time. So wow, that was really nicely, nicely done. done. And with that, we are out, unfortunately. So this GG, man.